field trip today. We get to go on the 110 to the 10 to the 405 because Bob has baseball practice tonight and he left his baseball bag in Mr. Rosenberg's car, which, you know, normally I might just say like, well, that was your responsibility, Bob, to get it out of dad's car, knowing that you have practice tonight, but everything has been so crazy and upside down with uh, the whole bed bug fumigation situation, which is going great, by the way. I have not seen anything buggy at all. Um, that, you know, everyone gets a pass right now. Everyone. And, um, and when I say everyone, I mean like the other people that are here with me on the 110, even the guy in the van that isn't going to let me, oh well, I'm going to just do it. Um, you know, merging, merging problems on the freeway. Um, going to let it pass. Uh, I know people have, some people have a hard time at the holidays and I think there are lots of different reasons. Um, it can remind you of Christmases. The, the ghosts of Christmas past can come to haunt you, for sure. Past relationships, past marriages, your childhood, you know, um, sad things. And then there's usually a couple of happy things in there, too. Um, and... I will tell you, I don't have many memories of Christmas from being a kid. Um, there are lots of pictures that kind of help me remember certain things. Like I remember one Christmas when I really wanted an Easy Bake Oven and I got an Easy Bake Oven from Santa. And bonus, I got a suede fringe vest. I think I was in first grade and I thought I was the coolest person in the world because not only was I instantly a baker who had their own bakery. I was also um, kind of a hippie. So that's when that started. Um, anyway, I will say that there's another great Christmas uh, tradition that we had growing up. I went to a church with my family growing up in Santa Cruz and um, they did the Christmas pageant with the kids every year. Oh, another white van. Come to cut me off. Okay. It's that day. Anyway, um, and I had been, you know, a shepherd before. I had been an angel. And then in about, I want to say fourth grade, I was chosen to be the Virgin Mary, which, um, was sort of in 1,000 feet. Keep right oh, that's way he's talking to me, telling me where to go. It was sort of, not even sort of, it was the pinnacle of my acting career. I did other things in acting, um, dramatic. Keep right on to I-10. Besides my own life, um, back in the day, did some commercials, did some ill-advised background work, and a lot of auditioning and some plays and forensics and in 1000 like feet but keep right the pinnacle of that acting career was when i got to play virgin mary mother of god keep right on to i10 in, um, in the christmas pageant so i had um, a blue tablecloth as my headpiece and uh, my mom sewed had sewn a white gown that I think I'd used the year before as an angel, so we repurposed that with um, a uh, tie that you tie back your drapery with that had fringe, and so that was my belt. And um, and they gave me a baby doll to use as Jesus, who was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Now my only job was to hold baby fake Jesus in the towel in 1,000 feet at some point that's what 
that's not annoying at all. At some point, lay him in the manger. But what I did was, because I was method, keep left on to right ten. I did this, you know, I rocked him because he was a little fussy. And then um, I held, I held the baby Jesus up to my shoulder, put the towel over my shoulder, held the baby Jesus up to my shoulder, and burped. Go straight on for 15 minutes to my four o five. So, um, Sacramento. like I said, I was a method actor even then. I burped the baby Jesus. So, those are the kind of memories that I like to think about with Christmas. I have some others that are, you know, in my 20s, my 30s, that it got a little got a little weird. Um, my 40s, uh, it's been great because I met Mr. Rosenberg a week after I turned 40 and the holidays since then have been uh, different and fun and we celebrate Christmas and Hanukkah and Advent. So there's a lot going on. Bob came the next year and so having a kid at Christmas and Hanukkah and all the holidays can be really fun. Um, and all of the pictures of Bob with Santa and us with Santa trying to get Bob not to scream, being held by Santa, those kind of things that we put our children through, but they're hilarious for us. Um, anyway, just so you know, I've made the transition from the 110 to the 10. I'm now on the 10, not close yet to the 405, just to the 10 and Western. So, um, I'm also doing a really good job of not looking at the camera because I want you to know that I'm being responsible because my goal was to not fuss with the camera any more than I would if I was just changing the radio station. So just so you know, the radio station I did have on was, of course, Christmas carols, because I'm doing what I can, still doing what I can to get in the holiday spirit. So what we were talking about before, we, you and me, was, um, oh, having a hair situation, was um, how people get a pass from me, like from the week before Thanksgiving, you know, leading up to Thanksgiving all the way through December, December. Okay, or December, anyway, all the way leading up to that, um, people have a hard time, and there are expectations, um, and loneliness, as well as joy and togetherness, so it's a lot. The holidays are fraught. Fraught is the word I'm looking for. Um, and so, other than these people in white vans that are not letting me merge today, well, them too. Uh, you know, especially on the road, I'm giving people a pass because a lot of times people will, and I'm this way too, if you get in a mood, you won't necessarily take it out on the people around you unless the people around you are in another automobile and then it, everyone's fair game. You know, you, like, I would never in my life flip someone off in real life, just like on the street, like that's, or it, like if I had a job, I wouldn't do that at work, you know what I mean? Um, or certainly not at home. Um, but once you get in a car, suddenly that seems like normal behavior. And um, anyway, so I'm just saying, we should all, I think, try and take it easy and just know that everyone's trying to get where they're going and they would like to get where they're going about five feet before you do. So we're gonna let that happen. Anyway, I'm about halfway to Westwood right now to pick up the bag. That'll be fine. I got to hang out with you guys. That's always good. Um, when I turn off the camera, I will then be listening to more Christmas carols, um, except for, um, there's, 
a song that's from the, I think it's like the 40s or 50s, called I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas, and it's, I think, a little boy singing it, or worse, an adult sounding like a little boy on purpose who's singing it, but I think it's actually a kid, and um, it's horrifying. So um, when that comes on, which it does sometimes, I will turn down and let the Christmas carols take a rest for a moment until I can get rid of I want the hippopotamus for Christmas anyway um, and I will give that to you as a tip if that comes on when you're listening to Christmas carols you don't need that song anyway um, all right I'll be out here letting everyone have a free pass um, at least one today and uh, I hope you're having a great day and um, I'll think of you all dearly as I get on the 405.